Thank you for voting us Yuba Sutter's best in multiple categories, including financial advisor and wealth management firm for the past five years. You can find more information at shawassociatesinc.com or 530-674-1150. Shaw & Associates is proud to support Community Radio. And in with me right now, we've got Dave Sampson, Jack Munger, and Jackson, I'm going to, Zoller, right? Zoller, yeah. Zoller, I got it. I was like, oh, man, I'm going to mess this up for sure. All with the Sutter Union High School trap team. Now, Dave, you are the head coach of these young men. I am. We started the team about 10, almost 11 years ago. Okay. What made you decide to start, hey, let's have a trap team here in, in Sutter? Well, it's interesting you should ask. My oldest son went to Granite Bay High School, and I was a coach there, and I worked in Sutter. I, I worked for the Sutter County Sheriff's Office for about 30 years. Okay. And uh, I, I was familiar with Sutter. I knew they had a rifle team, and I went to Ryan Robeson, the principal out there, and said, hey, what about a shotgun shooting team? And he said, absolutely, let's do it. So uh, the rest is history. The rest is history. So what kind of history are we looking at here? Well, we started out with trap uh, and then eventually expanded to sporting clays and our league expanded to sporting clays uh, at that time as well. And uh, and then skeet started actually before sporting clays. And uh, then uh, we kind of worked into Olympic bunker. So, uh, and yeah. So what's the difference between all four of those? So trap and clays and skeet and Olympic bunker. Different games. Uh, trap, you have a trap house 16 yards in front of the shooters. There's five shooters. They shoot one at a time and the birds uh, travel uh, in about a 40 degrees or a little less than 40 degree spread um, uh, out directly in front of you. It's to simulate um, live bird shooting. Right. Uh, and it actually started when cities would trap uh, nuisance birds, you know, like pigeons. And then gotcha. what they would do is on the weekends, they would take them out in the country where you could shoot them and they release them. And that's why you say pull. You pull as you pull the string on the, the cage that releases the bird and you shoot and a dead bird is a dead bird and a lost bird is a lost bird, meaning it got away. Right. So <clears throat> skeet's a little different. Skeet, you shoot in a semi-circle or half circle really and there's eight positions uh, that you shoot from there's a high house and a low house the, the targets never change but your position does as you move around uh, and uh, it, it actually started on a chicken farm otherwise it would have been a complete circle but they had right. neighbors so they had a <laughs> half circle so that's where it started and it took off from there uh, and uh, history is kind of interesting. It, you know, it, it takes a lot of lead to be able to hit a skeet target, and it's a fast moving. It's close, right, but yeah. it's fast. And in World War II, to teach um, fighter pilots the concept of lead, so because they had to shoot at other airplanes, right? Yeah. They took them out to shoot skeet, so that they could learn how to how to shoot ahead of the target in order to hit it. So, kind of some history there that's kind of interesting. That, that is really cool. And what mm -hmm. about Olympic bunker? What's what's the difference there? Olympic bunker is made to be very, very challenging. It's a very humbling sport, and we recommend kids don't do it until they've mastered trap or one of the other venues, uh, or if not more than one of the, mm -hmm. the other venues. The birds come out at about 78 miles an hour, which is about twice the speed they come out of a regular oh, wow. trap house when you're shooting trap. And they come out at an extreme hard left or a hard right or a straightaway, and then they vary in height. But you can shoot two shots at it. <clears throat> However, at 78 miles an hour, you better be pretty fast with that second shot. Uh, yeah. So that's why it's an Olympic sport is it's, it's designed to be very challenging. So, and then you've got some, some young men in here that are great at doing this stuff, especially Jackson over here. Got a scholarship uh, for, yeah. shooting, for shooting skeet uh, that, and trap and all that good stuff. Yeah, out to Midland University in Nebraska, Fremont. It's like 45 minutes out of Omaha. Yeah. Uh, I, I'd say that without shooting, I probably wouldn't even be going to college right now. Like, yeah. That scholarship helps so much with paying for it because it's a, around like a 40 some thousand dollars a year right. for tuition. And I got 28000 knocked off for shooting scholarship. So That's amazing. Yeah. So what do you plan on studying? Because you're a senior this year, right? Yeah, a senior this year. Uh, I plan on getting either a major in history or criminal justice. Those are the big two. Those are the big two. What do you want to do when you grow up, let's say? <laughs> uh, probably just one of the kind of far off ideas I have right now is like if I take that criminal justice major because we can get a uh, political science minor with it. So right. maybe I could go out to like some out in nowhere town and just like be the sheriff. Or <laughs> There you go. <laughs> There's a new sheriff in town yeah. right here. There you go. There to be the sheriff, right on. And Jack, you're a junior. Yes. And shooting, 
uh, how uh, what does trap do for you what i mean cuz you're saying oh but i'm not that good but i'm sure you're great so trap is completely different than any other shooting because everyone thinks that it would be easy cuz the targets are right out in front of you but it's right. not it's all in your head it's all mental for trap yeah for sporting clays you need lead sticky you need lead um trap you don't need much lead it's all in your head when you whether you hit the targets or not Oh, that's crazy. Yeah. So what what uh, form is your favorite? Is trap your favorite? or I would have to say skeet or sporting clays. Skeet or sporting clays. Mm-hmm. What about you, Jackson? What's your favorite shoot? Skeet, easily. Yeah. Easily for me. But I just like having it be the same target every single time, just far leads, and it's, it's quick, and it's just a lot of fun for me. I mean, that's about all there is to that. Yeah. So how did you guys get into being part of the team? Like, what made you decide, hey, maybe shooting sports would be something fun to do. So I've always duck hunted my life, and at our club there's a trap yeah. house. And I, I shot it once, and I was like, oh, this is fun, kept shooting it. And then my dad comes to me, there's a team. And I was like, there's a team. And it was Coon Creek at the time. Mm-hmm. But because I wasn't in high school, so I wasn't, and I didn't know that there wasn't really a junior team for a setter yet. Okay. So I shot for Coon Creek didn't really shoot much because I had other things going on, but I loved it. And then went, got into high school, started on the uh, high school team and haven't stopped. There um, you go. What about you, Jackson? How did you get into it? Uh, just like him, I used to I love hunting a lot of ducks. And then one day during, we have these club days at the high school. And that's when I saw Dave's 10 over there. I was like, what's the trap? I don't, I, like, I didn't even have any concept of what it'd be at the time. So I just went up, talked to him, and said, "Oh yeah, I was shooting sports shotguns." I was like, "Ooh, I like I like shooting guns. That sounds like." Cool. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it took some flowers home, and decided, you know, I'm gonna show my mom, my dad, and we went out to the very next practice. So when when did you, what year in school did you start doing trap and uh, skeet? Freshman. Freshman I didn't do year. Skeet okay. Until like I think not till sophomore. I'm, I'm not sure. It's kind of hard to remember, but. Sophomore, it's, junior year, I think. Yeah. yeah. Start shooting skeet. So, do you guys do it? Is it like there's a trap team, there's a skeet team, there's there's different teams, or are you guys all just part of the one team? We're what's all part of the one team, but some of the kids uh, shoot. Most all the kids shoot trap, and most all the kids shoot sporting clays. Gotcha. And then we have some that, that shoot skeet, and some that shoot an Olympic bunker when they get to that level. So it's kind of like a specialized type thing. It is, yeah. All right. Yeah. You guys have a fundraiser coming up here shortly for uh, for your team. February 12th, uh, you know, we missed last year due to COVID, but, mm-hmm. you know, we're, we're putting on another fundraiser dinner on February 12th, the main hall at the fairgrounds, um, and uh, it'd be, it's going to be a great dinner. We've got lots of great sponsors. We've got a great live auction list. We have it on our Facebook site. Uh, you can go in and look and see what's on live auction. We'll have silent auction, and uh, we got lots of great stuff. Yeah, so what types of stuff are, are up for auction? Well, <clears throat> I brought the list. So we have... Uh, cornhole game we've got some hunts we got giants tickets we've got a five-day stay in hawaii uh, that you can you can bid on and buy we've got some knives we've got rambo's guide services donated three hunts uh there's a pheasant hunt a dove hunt and a turkey a junior turkey hunt uh we've got some uh party duck calls uh patio colors we've got some cakes for some donated guns oh there you go uh, so we'll we'll uh we'll do that again where you got a one in four chance to, to win a gun if you buy a cake you know, that, wow. And uh, what else do we have? RCBS has given us some, some reloading equipment we'll have on there. And Butte Sand and Gravel is one of our big sponsors. They give us a load of rock that we're going to auction off. We have a youth duck hunt. And uh, what else do we have here? <clears throat> oh, the metal shop at the school. We've got a couple of kids on our team that are in the in the shop out there, and they're making us a fire pit uh, that we'll oh, have to auction awesome. off. And maybe a bench. Um, those did real good last year. And then Rahag is... Uh, Hunting Club donated uh, 300 sporting clay targets and five chuckers. So then you can have you a sporting clay day and a chucker hunt out there. Yeah, that sounds like fun. So, got some great stuff, great sponsors. Uh, Dow Lewis Motors, one of our sponsors. The 4G Foundation, that's Jerry Handy. He's going to yeah. be cooking the meat. Stan Cleveland and his Royal Rangers are going to be managing the kitchen. We just had a meeting last night. Matthews Motorsports, one of our uh, platinum sponsors. Uh, Plumas Bank, that's our that's our bank. Uh, they're going to... They're going to be helping us out there too, and Daniel Gaines Insurance. Uh, let's see who else do we have here. 
on the list. So don't want to miss anybody. Taylor Brothers right. Farms, Intero Realty. Uh, uh, Randy and Gaylene Cole have donated a gun, and they're, uh, they're our sponsor as well. Larry Giwicky Ford, Dawson Oil, and Joe Jacobs are our sponsors. We really appreciate what they do. Hoblet Motors is going to be a sponsor in the game. They're a platinum sponsor as well and donated some guns to the, uh, to the dinner. And All American Construction, they're uh, one of our parents. Uh, yeah. They, uh, they've uh, donated some cash and also uh, a large amount of cash, actually, and uh, also bought a big dog table. Damon and Patty Olray are donated the two guns that are going to be on live auction. And also some stuff that we have for raffles. So, and then Montana is, is our big sponsor, and that's that's what Jack was talking about the trap house that he shot. Yeah, we, we practice there as well. And Al Montana pays for the targets and lets us shoot there. Oh, that's so, amazing. Yeah, we, he's been doing that for years. So he's a he's a platinum sponsor as well. So we really appreciate everybody that does what they do for us and for these kids. Yeah, because a- the sport benefits these kids in so many ways. It's just not just about shooting. And it really isn't. It's it's about learning how to to work with a team because I mean, sure, it's individualized as far as when they're out there shooting, but at the same time, it is kind of a team sport, isn't it? It is. It's an individual sport that's been very successfully made into a team sport. Yeah. So, and we, we really try to highlight that. Um, you know, it teaches the kids, you know, the team effort, work ethic. You know, I was an administrator for a long time, and I did a lot of the hiring. And I tell you what, it's really important to get kids. I liked it when I saw that they were in a sports program because I knew that they understood what it meant to be on a team and to work with others. Yeah, and I knew for they sure. knew how to work with others. Um, so it's it's great. And Sutter High School offers a lot of different things for kids to to participate in because not everybody can be a football star or a lacrosse star. You know, right? They can, they can do other things, something that they're good at. And I try to, you know, I I tell these kids all the time. I was telling Jackson when he first started, he couldn't hit a target. You know, yeah. I, I see these new kids coming out. I had a girl out there the other day, couldn't hit a target. Well, guess what? She's hitting targets now. Yeah. And, you know, and and I see, when I look at those new kids and I see them at that level, I see this guy right here. You know, it's in three or four years, look where he's at. Right. And now he's got a scholarship to even for for target shooting. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, tell me, Jackson, let's talk about that. You, You were talking to me before we came on the air about how it was a struggle for you to even hit your first target when it was just a hand throw and just yeah. really simple. What what did you feel when you finally hit that first target? Uh, it felt really good. Yeah. <laughs> of course, that was after missing like twenty four of them, but right. Uh, just hitting that first one just it gives enough confidence to start hitting more, and then you start hitting more. It's just it's it just takes practice. That's all it is. Yeah, it takes and just understanding how to lead the clay and all of that stuff too, right? Yeah. And, and trap, there's not really that much lead, but there's still just a little. You just gotta focus yourself, knock mm-hmm. everything out of your head, really, and kind of just go for it. And so, what has been being on the trap team? What has that taught you? Uh, on the team, humble. Yeah. Especially when I started shooting monk I went from that was when I was doing some of my best in skeet. I was shooting nine sevens, ninety eights, and I went to bunker, and my first round I ever shot was like an, a seven. Yeah. Out of 25. So, <laughs> but it's really taught me just control of myself, and it's been really good. Really yeah. Good. What about you, Jack? What, I mean, what, what, what happened when you first got into it and all that good stuff? So, like he said, keeping your composure when you're shooting and when it helps you work with other people, you get to see different people that you wouldn't think would be out there, and they're out there and they're good. Like, yeah. And then there's a lot of people out there that share the same dreams that you like you have the same things that you want to do like shooting and all that and you'll meet other kids from other teams and you'll you'll know them for the rest of your life because they're your competitors you'll lose to them you'll beat them it's just fun to do so when very good hobby yeah that brings up a good point when you go to these tournaments and and things happen and you're competing against these uh other schools and other clubs how do you guys how does the tournament work? I mean, is it everybody against everybody? Is it, you know, set up in different divisions? So, you know, you have different age groups. How how do you set up for the tournaments? 
Yeah, funny you should ask. Uh, the the teams uh, they compete against each other, and we have on shoot day we have actually six locations where kids are shooting in our league. So we will be assigned to different locations just uh, based on logistics, and um, the team scores go into uh, for schools we have divisions, mm-hmm. and for clubs they didn't have divisions, but we're going to have divisions. We're working on that now, and the idea is that teams of equal skill level will be competing against. Uh, other teams of, of near or equal skill level so yeah. keep it fair you know smaller teams generally are you know in lower divisions we were always in division three because Sutter's a small school right I think we're going to be in division two now because it's growing a little bit and then there's division one and division one schools are the big schools larger gene pool uh, more right. kids exactly so, you know the team scores are going to excuse me going to be better uh, with with the the larger schools or typically are so <clears throat> try to keep it fair and then at each of the individual venues there's individual awards so the the teams that are there and the kids that are there all compete for you know for second well actually first through fifth now in JV and first through fifth in varsity and the junior teams uh, the junior kids the same way we have them as as young as uh, fourth and fifth grade Oh, wow. Uh, and they start out as rookies, uh, as a first-year shooter. And then 6th, 7th, and 8th grade are the intermediate division. And then there's uh, intermediate entry and then intermediate advanced. And the goal there is that kids in those divisions are competing against kids of equal or near-equal skill level. So gotcha. that's the goal. Much like a lot of other sports, they do similar things. Right. And so what's what's been happening? So you've been doing this for 11 years now, you said, right? Yeah. And so how has that changed? Are you getting more and more younger people getting more involved in trap and skeet and Olympic bunker? Or is it about the same and just keeping going through? It's growing. Uh, we're, we're growing. When I first started in this program uh, on shoot day, I just mentioned we had six locations where kids are shooting. Yeah. Uh, at six different ranges throughout the state of California. Well, when I first started, there was only two locations. So it's continued to get bigger and bigger and bigger. Um, and with COVID, actually, we grew because of the fact that other sports were shut down. We were an yeah. outdoor sport. We had to change the way we did business. You know, Correct. you mentioned earlier that, you know, how do the shoots work? Well, and during the, the COVID time, we had to schedule kids to shoot. They would, sh- they would show up, shoot, and then leave. Right. You know, to prevent uh, social interaction um, because of the, the virus. But, you know, uh, the way it normally works, it's really a family sport and a family day. We, we show up at a certain time in the morning. We're scheduled to shoot throughout the day. Uh, we shoot usually 50 in the in trap. We'll shoot 50 in the morning, 50 in the afternoon. And we have shoot-offs and an award ceremony at the end, and the kids spend the day there uh, with the family as a team with other teams. So it promotes interaction, which I think is really important, you know, to the kids. Uh, yeah, for you know, sure. For, and for the teams. Uh, the fact that it's a gentleman's sport, it's not all about winning. Yeah. You know, so we develop a, a pretty good, uh, you know, camaraderie and we get to know people from other teams um, and, and the kids from other teams as well. You know, they're they're all important to us. I'll coach a kid on another team the same way I coach one of our kids. Oh, uh, that's awesome. Absolutely. And we encourage that. We encourage that with the kids, you know, to help each other. Yeah. So. So it's a more about bringing yourself up, improving yourself than in beating the, the competition. Right, and helping others. And helping uh, others. To do the same thing. That's great. So yeah. f- February 12th, you have your your um, your fundraiser going on, right, at right. the fairgrounds. What um, If somebody wants to get tickets, how do they get tickets or anything like that? And call me, or you can go to our Facebook site, Sutter, High, Sutter Union High School uh, Trap Ski Sporting Clays and Olympic Bunker Team. That's a big old long name. But right. It, you'll find us, and uh, my number's on there, and my phone number is 530 301 Four six two two. They can call me. All right. Well, Jake or Dave, Jack and Jackson. You guys, thank you so much for being in. Our time's almost up. Is there anything else you want to say before we end? Thank you for having us on. Really like to highlight these kids and what what they do and what they love to do and what how it benefits them. Awesome. Thank you guys so much for coming in. This community interview is made possible by Shaw & Associates. I'm Dave Shaw, President and CEO of Shaw & Associates. For over 65 years, Shaw & Associates has been your trusted local expert for wealth management, tax, accounting, and payroll. Thank you for voting us Yuba Sutter's best in multiple categories, including financial advisor and wealth management firm for the past five years. You can find more information at shawassociatesinc.com or 530-674-1150. Sean Associates is proud to